Overstreet comic book price guide was first published in the year 1970. The first edition was white covered and shortly after was a second printing which had a blue cover. We're going to use that as our reference to look at the most valuable comics established in the very first Overstreet price guide in 1970. Action Comics number one was ranked as the most valuable comic at that time. We're going to use the low good grade from the book as our way to tabulate the most valuable comics in the guide. We'll see that Action Comics number one ranks the highest with a $200 good value based on its grade in the price guide at this time. This was the first appearance of Superman. And if you look at this chart, you'll see it just for reference sake. I also include the prices for a good grade from the Overstreet 2016 price guide. That's a 46 year difference. And you'll see how much the prices have changed. Looking at the rest of the chart, let's analyze it a bit. Looking at the top 10, these were the books that were considered truly the most historically important comics early in fandom. And in the very first price guide, we'll see that the top 10 comics were dominated DC had four in the top ten, but some of the earliest comics which established the standard modern comic book format um, also make the list. So we see some early 1930s comics even in the top ten. Century of Comics and Funnies on Parade, both from 1933, make the top ten. As does King Comics, number one from 1936, from David McKay, very high rank. Notice that there were only seven comics that were considered to be ultra-major important comics with a price guide value of $100 or more at this time. Keep in mind, in 1970, when this book was published, this was the first widely printed book that dealers would have actually had. And at that time, comic books were 15 cents at the newsstand. So spending $100 for a low-grade copy of these books was a lot of money in 1970. Timely Comics has two comics in the top 10. Still to this date regarded as the two most important timely comics. We have Marvel Comics number one and Captain America number one. We'll see that the oldest comic in the entire top 10 was the Century of Comics and Funny Sun Parade from 1933. And the newest comic to make the top 10 was Captain America number one from 1941. In fact, only two comics from the 1940s make the top 10. If we branch down a little bit further, we see what else makes the top 20. We've got Famous Funnies and Mickey Mouse Magazine. Again, two other classic 30s titles. And that was the highest uh, valued Disney-related comic book at that time, was Mickey Mouse Magazine number one from 1935. Captain Marvel Special Edition was one of two big Captain Marvel appearances in the top 15 his first appearance in Wiz Comics ranked high at the list, number five, at $150 at the time. One of the five big books in comic book history. If we go down the list a little bit further, let's see if any books surprise us. Well, there's a few books that ranked really high as uh, historically important, rare, and high in demand in the first price guide. And that includes feature book number 25 and number 26, which both made the top 20 most valuable comics with a very high value of $85 in good condition. And these were early appearances of Flash Gordon and Prince Valiant. But if you look at the Overstreet price guide 46 years later, you'll see that those books have only doubled in price. So those books have not even kept up with basic inflation and those have been some of the most uh, overpriced books originally and have not increased with the times. When you consider that Action Comics number one, $200 at the time, is now worth $155,000 in the same condition in the new price guide, you'll see that that is an increase of 775 times. That means for the amount paid for one copy in 1970, you could now buy 775 copies. That puts Action Comics number one way in the lead for most profitable book in the top 30. You'll see I've done a breakdown for the top 30 most valuable books on this list. There's a couple others that also did quite poorly. Four Color Comics number 10 is another early Flash Gordon appearance. And in fact, in the most recent guide, it's worth $84. That's even less than what it was worth 46 years ago. 
So you haven't even broken even on that book. And another shocker is single series number 20. This is an early classic Tarzan cover, but had a hefty $75 price tag at that point and has only doubled in 46 years. Another book that hasn't done tremendously well, but at least a little bit better, is The Funnies, number one from 1936. Classic Dell series worth a hefty $60 back in 1970. It's now up to $400, which is not bad, but that's only up seven times in value, which is basically uh, lined up with how much inflation has rose in the dollar in that time period. If we go down the chart a little bit else, see if anything else grabs us, we'll see that the Overstreet Price Guide listed a series called Black and White, which was actually feature book number five with Tarzan with a hefty $60. And if we go down the list to see if there's any other shockers, King Comics number two had a hefty $50 value. And we've got Black and White number 16, which is Donald Duck with $50. And a few others that might surprise us a little bit that they rank so high. Super Comics number one from Dell, 1938, is also a $50 book. Now, what's happened over time is that when the first Overstreet Price Guide was established, we're basically looking for books of historical importance, key number one issues of long-running series, books that establish something important. But over the decades, a lot of these other books have not quite increased as much as the most popular, trendy, superhero-related comics. So now when you look at the most valuable comics, the list is primarily dominated by superhero comics from DC and Timely especially. But when you look at this old original Overstreet Price Guide, it's amazing how few DC Comics and Timely are actually in the top 30 most valuable comics. In fact, I think DC has 11 and Timely has 4. So that's roughly half the chart. That has changed a lot over the years as DC and Timely really dominate now. Shock Illustrated, number three, is a 1956 comic from EC Comics. This is a very rare book was considered to have only 200 copies printed and therefore ranking number 66 of all time makes it the most valuable 1950s comic on the list and the most valuable comic since the mid-1940s. And so you could debate and say it's the most valuable Silver Age comic at this time. Though the term Silver Age wasn't widely used yet at this point. There were 222 comic books in the first Overstreet price guide that had a value of $30 or higher in the good grade condition. 79 of the 222 books are actually priced at $30. So 91 of the comics worth over $30 or higher were from the 1930s. The biggest boom of comics on the entire list was from the year 1940. It dominates by far with 69 comics. That is a third of the entire list of most valuable comics are all from the exact year of 1940. The prime period of comic book and collectability is 1939 to 1941, which consists of 151 of the 222 most valuable comics ever. There are only 41 major key books with a hefty price tag of $60 or higher. Only two comics in the top 65 most valuable of all time were from 1942 or newer. And interestingly, those books are no longer considered major valuable books. If we sort the chart completely by age, we can look at the oldest comics that were established early on as key issues and the most valuable books in the first Overstreet Price Guide in 1970. We'll see that three major popular books uh, from early on, Century of Comics, Funnies on Parade, and Famous Funnies Number 1, all from the early 30s, all have a good value of $85. And that price was also given to Mickey Mouse Magazine Number 1. We can see that from the years 1933 to 35, we've got 12 different early comic books. None of these are superhero books, but these are all pioneer books. And you can classify them either as Platinum Age books or the books that would establish the Golden Age. If we look at what books are the newest, it's interesting that there are only five comic books worth $30 or more that are dated 1943 or newer. And the two newest books on the list are both from EC Comics, Shock Illustrated, number three from 1956, and The Tales of Terror Annual, number one from 1951. 
Other than that, we've got a couple books from DC and Timely. And another surprise book that ranked very high in value in the early price guide was all the issues of the Buck Rogers series. And number one through six all make the most valuable chart. Since the comic book fandom was less than a decade old, any comics from the 1960s still had not established much of a value yet in the first price guide. These books were at the time considered to be much more common and therefore did not deem a high price tag. Fantastic Four number one from 1961, now nine years old, was the book that was considered to start the Marvel Silver Age of superheroes and it is the most valuable Silver Age comic from Marvel in the first Overstreet price guide. And Fantastic Four number one was considered way scarcer and more important than Amazing Fantasy 15 at that time. And we will find that Amazing Fantasy 15 and Amazing Spider-Man number one were both listed at $12 each in good. Incredible Hulk number one was listed at $10. The most valuable DC Silver Age comic in the first Overstreet price guide was not Showcase number four, and it was not Brave and the Bold 28. It was in fact Showcase number 17, featuring Adam Strange at a $10 price in good condition. Comic collecting had been pushed in the 1960s by those hunting out EC horror pre-code comics and then the new boom in the revival of superhero comics from DC. Therefore, some of the most valuable comics post-1950 are EC comics and the earliest DC and Marvel Silver Age hero books. EC Comics were in such high demand that two of the EC Comics are the only comics post-1945 to even make the chart of the most valuable comics. Some characters were so popular that they achieved very high rankings in the very first Overstreet Price Guide, but are not as highly collected now. This includes such big names as Tarzan, Flash Gordon, Dick Tracy, and Prince Valiant. They had some of the most valuable comics in the early days of the Overstreet Price Guide, but those books have not kept up with the times and not increased like the superhero books. DC Comics had an amazing 75 out of the 222 most valuable comics listed in the first Overstreet Price Guide. That is a third of the entire list of key books. Timely Comics, now known as Marvel Comics, had 31 of the 222 most valuable comics in the first guide. If we look at the titles that seem to be generally the most collected and most valuable, we'll see that Marvel Mystery Comics had 16 different issues with a value of $30 or more in good condition in the first Overstreet Price Guide. That's an incredible number of key issues. And even nine of those were worth more than $50 in the first guide. All-Star Comics from DC is surprisingly their biggest collected title with 15 different key issues expensive issues and three worth $50 or more. That's followed by Detective Comics with 14 issues, More Fun Comics with 10, and Action Comics is behind at seven. Interestingly, even though Action Comics number one always seems to be the most valuable comic, even from the early days, it was established that there were more valuable Batman in demand issues than Superman. Buck Rogers is impressive to make this list with six issues in a row making the chart, ranking it as the sixth most popular comic title with a high value. Four Color Comics has five issues with high value. King Comics also is surprised with a five, and Wiz Comics had five. Captain America has four, and Superman has four as well. Many would never guess now that All-Star Comics was the DC Golden Age title to collect at this time. Let's talk about inflation for a moment. A 10 cent comic bought in 1940 would now cost 28 cents in 1970 based on inflation. So if you had invested your money in a sense, your dollar was worth triple. However, the comic market by 1970 was established to be so strong that the key Golden Age comics did not go up three times in value from their original dime cover price. They, in fact, had jumped from 10 cent cover price to at least $30 or more for a low-grade copy of these key issues. This is a 300 times markup for the $30 comics, and Action Comics number one already was the most valuable with a 2,000 time markup from its original price. Based on 2017 inflation, a comic bought in 1940 for 10 cents should now be worth $1.75. Let's talk about now the most profit to be made. 
if we sort the list by the books that have jumped up the most in profit since the first Overstreet Price Guide, we'll see Action Comics number one has increased 775 times in price from its good price of $200 in 1970 to $155,000 in its good price in the 2016 Overstreet Price Guide, which we're using as our sample. We'll also see that Detective Comics 27 made a huge leap, as did Superman number one and Batman number one. So DC completely leads the way for books that have been the most profitable. Then we have a couple of timely books, Captain America number one and Marvel Comics number one. And this is followed by New Fun number one from DC and Flash Comics number one from DC. These are the eight key expensive books that have at least a hundred times themselves in value since the first price guide. You'll see that not every book with a high price, though, has been a guaranteed profit maker. In fact, we talked about Four Color at number 10 with Flash Gordon has not even kept its value. It's actually lost a dollar in a 46-year period. And the single series 20 and feature book 25 and 26 have only doubled. The Funnies number one has gone up seven times. And the Captain Marvel special edition number one has gone up only 10 times. So those, generally speaking, have not proven to be a good investment for such long term. Now, a lot of people at this time, were, of course, were into buying new comics, and the first speculating in new comic books was happening. And this happened widespread, especially in 1968, when Marvel launched a bunch of new number one series. Now, the Overstreet Price Guide came out in 1970, so there are no 1970 comics listed with any value yet in the first Overstreet Price Guide, and in fact, there are no 1969 books listed. But the majority of the 1968 Marvel issues are listed. Now keep in mind, these comics had a 12 cent cover price. And already in this 1970 book, we can see that the majority of the 1968 number one issues have a value of 50 cents in good condition or a dollar in near mint condition. So at a near mint price, that's eight times cover price. So some people complained and actually thought that the Overstreet Price Guide listed the prices too high for a lot of books in the first guide because this was an extremely high markup, paying eight times cover for a book that was only possibly a year and a half old. Therefore, definitely not rare. And a lot of speculators would have hoarded some copies. What's interesting, though, is that at that time, people didn't truly respect what it meant to have a near mint copy. And so the majority of copies that have survived still technically are now not considered near mint. What was maybe near mint then might only be considered fine now because people didn't truly appreciate the pickiness that has come with modern grading. So what comics do we see that there was initial demand? Well, it's proven early on that any giant size comics or annuals, king size specials, because they had a heftier cover price, the Overstreet Price Guide automatically lists them with a higher value. And therefore, we find the most valuable 1968 Marvel comics include Tales of Asgard, which had a hefty 25 cent cover price, as did Incredible Hulk Special Number 1, and the Spectacular Spider-Man Magazine Number 1, which came out that year, had a heftier price tag of 35 cents, I believe, and it's now listed with a dollar fifty in good or two fifty in near mint. It's interesting to note that at that time the near mint price was only double that of a good copy. So basically you had value as long as you owned the book. This has definitely changed over the years. There is now as much as a 20 times spread between good and near mint on many key books in the current Overstreet Price Guides. So as collecting condition has become more and more a factor and people want to own the best copy and grading has become more select and now we have CGC slabbing of books, condition has become everything and therefore we're getting record prices for high grade books as people realize there are so few of them. Also on this chart, you'll see I've listed the Marvel 1967 series that debuted. And again, the specials, which are annuals with a heftier cover price, automatically get a higher value. 
Marvel Super Heroes number 12 seems to be the first breakout valuable key issue at a hefty $1.50 in good condition. And if we include the 1966 Marvel books, we'll see that the Patsy Walker Fashion Parade is an example of a book that's not even listed in the first Overstreet Price Guide, as was the case with also America's Best TV Comics, Pussycat Magazine, and Groovy Number no. 1. These oddball series, which were not superhero, were not listed in the first Overstreet Price Guide. Interestingly, the most affordable book in the entire Overstreet Guide from the late 60s from Marvel is Thor 126 because it was lumped in with issues of Journey into Mystery and therefore not deemed to be a new series and therefore not given the same value accordingly that number one issues were given. Now, an interesting thing is to see just how valuable were the key Silver Age books this early on in Overstreet history. So here are the 20 most important Silver Age comics based on current prices. And we'll look and see how they ranked then in low and high grade in the Overstreet 1970 price guide. And we'll even compare the prices with the original 1965 Argosy comic book price guide, which was the first time we have an official listing for all these books. So, in the 1970 Overstreet Price Guide, by far, Fantastic Four number one is the most valuable book. Truly considered a key important book. $20 in good shape or $30 in near mint shape. And that was up from $6 in the Argosy Price Guide five years earlier. The most valuable DC comic book on the list we'll see is showcase number four at eight dollars or twelve dollars in near mint and this was up a little bit from the 750 price tag it had it had been the most valuable silver age book in the argosy price guide but now it was knocked down a bit as the marvel books had now proven their popularity and we had four marvel books dominating the most valuable 1960s or silver age comics the two key Spider-Man books both listed at $12. Notice, it's interesting, the books that had not yet broken out as key books. Adventure Comics 247 was only worth a dollar and was not even listed in the Argosy price guide. Just not yet a key issue. Detective Comics 225 was just lumped in as just another Batman issue. Not yet established as a key issue. So worth only 50 cents in the Overstreet Price Guide and 75 cents in near mint. This was actually lower than Argosy had listed its value five years earlier. Our Army at War number 83, a major key war book with Sergeant Rock appearing, only listed at 25 cents in low grade and 50 cents for a near mint copy and not even listed in the Argosy book, just not a popular hero collected title at that time. So it's fascinating to just look at how things have changed. Don't we all wish we could go in a time machine and stock up all these comic books that seemed to be so affordable at that time? But the question is, did people really have access to these books? It was the mail order days. There really weren't many comic shops. Nobody could order direct. Nobody could stockpile books. You took a chance of whatever came out at the newsstand and you took a chance of whatever condition you'd find. You really couldn't be that picky about condition. People were not bagging and boarding and protecting their books. And condition had not proven to be a dominating factor of collecting. People just simply wanted to have a copy, period. People still read comics at that time. So again, comic books at this time were 15 cents brand new on the newsstands. People were excited about finding these books. And keep in mind, the golden age at that time wasn't that long ago. When looking for a comic from 1940, that was only 30 years ago. If you put that in modern day trends, 30 years ago doesn't seem that long ago. And yet, unfortunately, we know that the Golden Age books simply were not saved. They were not collected. They did not have value when first produced. And that is why they originally became so valuable, because people appreciated the scarcity. I'd like to thank you for watching and check out our other series of videos. And leave me some comments. I'd love to hear what you think. Any surprises in this video?